Hi everyone, it's Linda from Linda Z's in Arlington Heights, ready for your cup of coffee or your glass of tea if you're watching this in the evening or something sparkly. <laughs> we are ready to continue with the quilt that I was showing you in a couple of other videos. I uh, wanted to really talk to you about the binding, the finishing after you do a quilt. Now I've got other videos out there on the binding, so I'm not gonna go into that in detail. But what I did want to do, and as you remember, um, in one of the prior videos on this quilt, I showed how to measure. Uh, this is a quilt for my new great-granddaughter, Charlotte Joy, who is out in the Seattle area, in Darrington, actually. And she is um, only a couple weeks old and uh, needs to have a nice little pink quilt from her grandma. So this is what this is all about. And I thought, what a great way to show you how to finish the um, the uh, binding and, and how to finish the quilt. If, if you personally take it on your long arm or if you've had somebody do it for you, we have long arms at the store, so it's wonderful for us to be able to put them on and then be able to take them off. We always have a quite a bit of a border around them. And I showed you in the last video how to trim that and get it accurate. Then I um, cut the binding and showed you, you know, how to measure and what to um, what to look for. This is actually a two inch binding. And because this is a small baby and, it, and you know, as she gets into toddlers and, you know, this is meant to be used. It's meant to be thrown in the machine and it's meant to be washed. So this has been sewn. When I do something like that, I sew it from the wrong side and then I flip the binding over to the right side. And again, I wanted this to be a tinier binding. I used about an eighth of an inch of the batting on the outside, and then I'm turning it to the right side. And you can see my clips over here, and I'm gonna show you on this machine in a moment exactly what to do with the design. But you can see how the corners miter perfectly. I don't have to sew them or anything. See how that, that's come to, a, I don't know if you can get that up real close, but you can see. Let me put a little tiny, I love these little tiny clips. I've got them mixed in with my big ones. And I'm always looking for the smaller clip like this because it, it really is easier to um, work with because you can get it right at that point. And you see how that, that little uh, mitered corner right here works just perfectly here. And what I'm going to do, I'm gonna start up here. Of course, I'm gonna go all the way around the quilt, but I'm going to use this foot that his, it's an edge stitch foot, just a very simple number 10 foot. Those of you that have bigger machines, this is the, the new K475. We have them in the store, come and look at them. They are um, just a beautiful, beautiful machine. We've taken quite a few orders on them and we'd love to have you come and see what they look like. But I'm going to run this, maybe they can see this up close here. I'm going to run this, this little blade right here, right along the edge of this binding on the right side because I'm then going to do one of these cave designs, which are so sweet. There's a little flower design in here that I'll go to the machine and show you in a minute. But you see how straight I'll get this? I You don't have to use all these clips. I mean, it's a good idea to periodically put them on so you don't have your your binding, um, you know, roll over on you and all of a sudden you run into an extra. Now you can see when I put the bigger clip on here, do you see how it's harder to get? On this little one, it's just so easy to be able to put that on there. When I'm doing a small binding like this, again, this is a two inch binding. So let me take this to the machine and bring it over here. I'm gonna, the one thing about Bernina that you can see on here, and I hope you can see it real easily, the, um, you don't really need to, um, you know, fiddle with a screwdriver or anything. There's a post right here that I want you to be able to see. Let's see if I can get my finger up here to show you what it is. It's right here. And what you do is you put that uh, foot right on top of that post, and then this little lever right here goes right down on it. I normally do this with one hand, but I wanted you to be able to see what I was talking about. So I'm pointing to it. This is a little lever that goes on. And now that is so secure, there is no way that I can take that off. I like to start with my threads up. Actually, I like it on all machines. I know sometimes they tell you to bring it down there, but when I'm doing a decorative stitch like this, it's always nice to start with your thread, your two threads up here. This will be on the bottom. I'll kind of hold those or the foot can hold them down as you're starting. 
The other thing that I'm doing is I'm using a thread up here that's a heavier weight thread. When I do my quilting, I love Aurifil. I just think there's nothing better when I'm quilting or when I'm piecing. But when I'm doing my binding, um, I really do like the Metrazine. I think it's just fabulous. And I want this little decorative stitch to stand out a little bit. I don't want it to be too strong, but I want to have a little bit of a edge to it. And that, um, I actually have some um, 28 or 30 weight thread. It's hard to find right now. Um, but you could, um, anything, you know, there's a, a rule of thumb in threads. The higher the number, the finer the thread. So this is a lower number, 28 is a lower number, so it's going to be a finer thread, or 30 is a lower number than 40. 40 is what you would normally use when you're doing um, hoop embroidery, or 50 you might be using when you're doing some of your quilting. So there's a lot of different um, weights and methods about quilting and, and threads, but I'm not going to get into all that. I just wanted to let you know I'm doing a little bit of a heavier thread up here. I have the same thread in the top as what I have in my bobbin. And that way I'm going to distribute that design very easily. In fact, I also, before I decided my um, design, I got my little trusty book of stitches out. And boy, if you don't have this yet, I know some of you have ordered the, um, the we have a package that is just very, very, very reasonable. And if you haven't got that, just call the store because there's a couple of them left. They're almost sold out. But what I did is I went here and I kind of looked to see, do I want one little flower? Do I want a couple of them? I went over here and saw how they looked when they're reversed, because I can reverse these designs. Then um, I took a piece of fabric. It was just an old piece of fabric I had. And I looked at all of these on what I wanted to do. And I just went and put them, um, you know, the design right next to the edge and the, the foot. The edge foot ran right along here, and half of the design is on top of the, this side of the binding, and half of it would be on the other side. And it, it's just a really pretty little stitch that I thought would work. I could do run another one along there and another one and do some of these things, but I think because of the type of quilt this is, I'm going to stay just with what it is. And this will give you all kinds of ideas and things that you can do for binding and and various aspects of quilting that most of you probably never even thought about. Um, the other thing that I want to show you on here, I'm going to get rid of my coffee cup, <clears throat> is that the, um, the, the book and the color on here is just so spectacular. I don't know if you've seen any of the other videos, but I, we are just so thrilled to be able to introduce this machine to um, people. And it's called, I think it's called, everybody has their own color name, but I think it's a vintage blue, and it really is just wonderful colors. So um, let's start sewing so you can see what the machine will do. Now I'm going to bring it up to the top, and before I start, let me go to the machine so I can show you what I'm going to do on the screen. This is the screen of the new K facet, and this is the little stitch that I chose. The way that I chose it, and I lengthened the stitch, you have a a, a, a button here that will make it wider for your zigzag and another one here that'll make it uh, longer and you can go to any length it depends upon what you like but if you look at this little stitch button right here and I touch it again and there's all kinds of folders in here and in every one of these folders they have a ton of different stitches but down here this is the K facet folder that is only in this machine. And there's these little stitches are following lots of his designs that they put on the machine itself. So I chose one of those that I thought, see that little one? It's kind of like this, a little bit like, and it's you're kind of using your own imagination with it. But if I touch the screen, you can see there's a whole bunch of them here. And I went to this one, which I liked. I think it really is a a pretty one and again I could make it a little bit longer but I don't want to make it too long because I want it to be uh, I want you to be able to see it see the shorter that it gets the the thicker that the um, the flower gets so you, you, there's all kinds of little different things that you can do to get real creative and show what um, your imagination on this now you can see I'm going to take this under the foot the foot is raised and I'm going to, and I have my knee lift lever set up here. I don't know, Nick, if that is in the um, the camera, but I love this knee lift lever. I, to me, it would be, and I know people that own these machines, and I'm 
always feel they didn't buy them from us if they haven't if they're not using this. Do you see what it's doing when I'm raising it with my hand? I don't know if they can yep. even see it. Okay. <laughs> Let's see what I'm doing. I'm raising and lowering the foot. Now I do it with my knee and that frees up my hands. Show it with your knee again real quick. Right here. Okay. And that's what it, that's the reason it's called a knee lift lever because it frees up your hands so that you can go ahead and put your um, your hands right on your fabric where it's going to really be important. Now I'm not going to sh um, sew the entire quilt. I just want you to get the idea of how to do this. And you can see again that that blade is right up to the um, the fold of the binding. By the way, your clips should always be with that flat side down because then they nice and smoothly go through your machine. Uh, I kind of want that a little bit, a little bit shorter. Again, I shouldn't be trying that on the actual quilt, but they rip out so easily. If I don't like it, I can easily do it. But you can see I'm going ahead and doing half of the design is right on the binding and half of it is off of the binding. And again, that's all you have to do. You're just gonna continue going around as you come up to your clip, you move it. And then again, you focus with your edge of your binding right here, right? I don't have my stylus or my stiletto with me today, but you can see with this um, ruler here, that's how you're going to be. It's gonna go right up to the edge. And that's, again, all you have to do. You can pick your own little stitch. You can go all the way around your quilt and you will have a finished binding that is really very sweet. And I think it's, it's very unique, something that you can't find anywhere else. Thanks so much for joining us today. I do have one last little thing and I'm gonna grab it real quickly. I'm gonna show you. This is going to be in the next, um, I'm gonna do one, uh, one more on this. I've shown you how to do, um, Labels, of course, you always want to label your quilt because you know years from now nobody will remember who did this quilt So I'm going to go to the K770 Which is a much bigger machine. It does have its own embroidery unit and it is gorgeous <laughs> I hope I can bring it out and do a nice little quick little um, I've done these before but this is a little bit different. So I'm going to show that in another video Thanks again for joining us. I hope to see you next week and really appreciate your comments. Have a great day, everyone.